esteemed colleagues, it is such a pleasure to be here and I'd like to congratulate all of our recent graduates and express my deepest gratitude to the faculty and leadership of the, of the Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology. In every age, the truths of the faith must be proclaimed in a new way. I came across this quote from Father Michael Sweeney and it took me back to a rainy day in May when I found myself sitting in a Tim Hortons on the lower level of Detroit's airport. The gentleman sitting across from me was abuzz with enthusiasm after reading New Financial Horizons, The Emergence of an Economy of Communion, a book detailing the emergence of a network of solidarity among some 800 firms that dedicate their profits to social aims and embrace operating principles inspired by the gospel. With the typical announcements of time zones and flight departures and luggage arrivals clamoring in the background, John Denniston, a member of the DSBT's College of Fellows, and I discuss what we perceive to be promising seeds of a new economy born of Catholic social teaching, in essence, a new proclamation of the faith. The economy of communion, born in the unlikely place of the favelas of Brazil in the early 1990s, has emerged as a prophetic dialogue between scripture and culture, a dance between faith and business. <clears throat> Little did I know that five years later, this past February, John Denniston would invite me to share reflections at DSPT's Convocation of the Laity on my formation and participation in the development of this economy of communion, an initiative of a lay ecclesial movement in the church known as Focolare. I relished in the opportunity to reflect on the dialogue between different studies, disciplines, and experiences in my life while drawing inspiration from this community, the DSBT community. Your commitment to studies in community at the intersection of a fruitful partnership between theology and philosophy has given me a new lens through which to see possibilities for the church to engage the culture so as to actively participate in the unfolding of God's plan of love in our own human story. In my life, I've experienced that taking up that call to engagement is often more about surrender than effort, more about collaborative co-creation than individual pursuit, and is full of surprises. Along the way, I've seen a world that is deeply thirsting for its spiritual home. As in every era of human history that comes to pass, I sense we are at a moment of reckoning with the realities of our current society. A shadow of greed has been exposed in our capitalist system, and even the most well-established business and economics programs around the country are facilitating new conversations to critique the status quo and invite new approaches to business and investment. Challenges of polarization stymie the promise of consensus-driven politics. Political campaigns have devolved into fear fests, and while technology promises enhanced connection, it has also led to deepening isolation. We can bury ourselves in the worlds of augmented reality while engaging with our brothers and sisters at arm's length as a caricature that we ourselves invent. Maintaining control, illusory control, and never allowing ourselves to be vulnerable in an authentic experience of community. At the same time, many scroll their phones for connection, and ironically, it's the advertisements that pop up on our social media that sometimes try to remind us to be human. It leaves me pondering how we can respond faithfully, courageously, and creatively in this particular moment, living fully into our vocations while drawing nourishment from our perennial tradition. I believe we need community, liturgy, contemplative practice, new language, or perhaps ancient language made anew to guide us along the way. The DSPT's endeavor to pursue truth as a community and in dialogue with the culture illuminates new possibilities for taking perennial wisdom and engaging in a profound conversation with contemporary issues. How might we, in keeping with the example of St. Thomas Aquinas, participate in bringing into harmony all the various ways of authentic understanding and various truths about the world in light of the highest truth, who is God. 
This strikes me as a dynamic process where we need people who remind our contemporary culture about the importance of metaphysical questions, of what it means to be authentically human. How might studies in classical philosophy and Catholic theology offer a critical set of questions and considerations for the technologist in Silicon Valley who is building a product that billions of users will make a part of their daily life, or grappling with the ethical implications, implications of an algorithm that's being built to automate several functions? How might it help researchers seeking to engage in meaningful reflections on the bioethical ramifications of genetic medicine and biotechnologies? Or the entrepreneur who can offer the opportunity for dignifying work and quality jobs, but faces the pressure of short-term profit realization from their shareholders. These and so many others need the accompaniment of individuals like yourselves who can help us all better grasp the nature of the person, of society, of community, and of our institutions. We need to start the conversations where and when necessary, participate in the debate so ethics has a place in all spheres of life, and accompany those who are wrestling with these questions and concerns. In so doing, I truly believe we can usher in new endeavors, experiences of genuine community, perhaps even new social and economic paradigms that are themselves a proclamation of the faith in a new form and in a new era. Whether it's an invitation to bridge disciplines, such as that of philosophy and theology with business, technology, and other areas of society, we can journey through the world, open to dialogue, ready to serve, and to be surprised. Surprised in ways like I found myself during that encounter in Detroit's airport five years ago, which sparked a dialogue that continues to be fruitful to this day, revealing the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. And as all of the graduates here are sent forth, you have been chosen to fulfill an important purpose. My invitation is to be open to the ways your knowledge, talent, and willingness to serve might be fertile ground for the Holy Spirit to creatively manifest new proclamations of the faith that greet the challenges of the world today. And I hope that underlying it all, you feel a tremendous sense of joy because your journey will likely take you to places you've never imagined. There will be an element of surprise, but the beautiful thing is you are well equipped with a strong foundation and community as you take these next steps. So again, I'd like to thank the Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology for the opportunity to join the College of Fellows. I am so grateful to be with you on this journey. Thank you.